Okay, so this video is for the paper practice stitching charts. And there are the three colors, uh, or four colors, sorry. Green, yellow, blue, and pink. Okay, and remember you need to do three of the four, so you need to decide what three you would like to do. And if you want to and you have time, you can do all four. Um, green's probably the easiest, then yellow, then the blue, um, and then the pink with the swirl. So I'm going to start out with the green one, um, and I've got to get my fabric out of the way. Um, on each of the papers, it does say a length and a width. Okay, on the pink one, it has a length and width for the swirl circle, and then a length and a width for each of the six lines. On the heart, everything is the same, all three hearts, and then all of the lines inside. So length one and a half, width zero. And then the yellow... Um, has an outside square length and width and then the four lines length and width. So you need to make sure that you are adjusting your width and length on your machine. I'm going to start out with the green one. Um, and for this one, it is a length of two. So I'm going to make sure that's matching at the two and a width of zero. Okay. When I <clears throat> sew... I'm going to push my paper um, or material away from me, okay? Because like I said in the video with the machine parts, the feed dogs are pulling away, so I need to also push away from myself. Um, these stitching charts concentrate on a few things. First of all, getting to know the width and length of your machine, getting to know... Um, you know, how to line things up on your presser foot and your needle. And then also with your gas pedal, how hard to push, um, you know, not NASCARing it, not flooring it, but how hard you need to press that gas pedal in order for the machine to run at a good speed and make you feel comfortable. So I'm going to start. When I'm sewing, I do not have my hands in the way. I do not have them this way. I don't have them like this. Okay, they are kind of like little paddles to the sides. I don't have my thumb out, none of that. Okay, I don't want anything in front of that needle. Um, if I'm sewing and someone begins speaking to me, I need to stop my sewing, concentrate on the conversation, then go back. Otherwise, um, my attention's going to get pulled towards them and then it could end up with something not so good happening, like a needle in your hand or something. So, I'm going to just simply start sewing and watching that needle go right into that line. It's following the line on the presser foot. Okay, when I NASCAR it, you can see it's hard for me to control my paper. Okay, so I want to go at a good speed. When I get to the corner, I'm going to stop with my needle in the paper. I'm going to lift my presser foot, rotate my paper, set my presser foot back down, and then continue sewing. Okay, so that is what I need to do for the green one and for any paper that has corners, such as the yellow one with the outside box. If I do the circular ones, I'm going to set my length at one and a half my width at zero for the circle okay and I'm gonna simply follow my line again okay with this one you may have to go a little slower and I would suggest see this kind of oval right here where the needle is actually sticking into the paper I would watch that versus watching the front of your presser foot where the line is um, concentrating on that watching the needle go into the paper right there okay and I do not want you to throw any of these papers away if you do absolutely awful that's great I want you to kind of struggle a little bit if you do that's fine um, when you're done you'll be able to see let's see your holes on the paper see how well you did see how well you followed your lines okay but I don't want to see any of these in the trash I want you to if you get off, go ahead and struggle, get back on the line, that kind of thing. 
if I have a paper that has a width, so a width of two, a width of three. So I'm going to do line three, width of, or wait, line five, length of one, width of three. Line five. So with this, if I had thread in here, it would be sewing a zigzag. So my needle is never going to hit my line, it's going to jump on each side of the line. And I'm just going to continue to follow the presser foot right down the line. And you can see the needles bouncing back and forth because if it had thread, it would be creating that zigzag. Notice that I'm going at a decent speed. I'm not NASCARing it. I'm not going too slow. If you need to go slower, that's totally fine. Go at a speed that you're comfortable with to get started and then keep a good speed. Okay, when I get done with this, again, you'll see that my line is like that. Okay, at the end of the day, when I'm finished, I need my machine to be just the way that it was when I got here. Press your foot down, fabric in, needle down, and I need to unplug the machine and hook the cord on the back. Okay, and that is the paper practice sheets.